Hi and welcome to another tutorial on the Xamarin platform. Um, in the previous tutorial we looked at making our first um, C Sharp program using the Xamarin Studio um, and we're going to continue on from that in this tutorial. We're going to look at variables and we're going to look a little bit more at the string data type which we touched on in the last tutorial. So basically um, what we've got here is we've got a program inside a solution and project called My C Sharp App. It's using the system namespace. Um, there's a new namespace called My C Sharp App. And we've got our main class, and inside that we have the main method. And um, inside that method, we have um, console.write line. So we're getting a message written to the console, and then console.read line. So we're waiting for the user to enter something. Um, we'll press a key until the program continues. Um, and that's basically it. So what we'll look at in this tutorial is um, a little bit more strings and we'll look at something called variables. Variables are basically like a container that can store information in them. So you might have um, a variable that will store different numbers that you'll need to use, uh, or store a number that you'll need to use in your program. Um, you might have a variable that stores a word or a sentence. Um, it could be a Boolean value like a true or false. So for example, a variable might store um, a player's score in a game, right? So their, their current score or maybe the health in a game. Um, a variable might store a player's name in a game, okay? Um, if you're making something like a calculator program, then you'll have variables that will store the numbers that are input or numbers that are entered into the calculator and the results and so on. So variables store information that's used within the program. All right, so variables can store data of different types. We discussed strings in the last tutorial and strings, a string is a data type that um, the data, where the data can contain characters, so letters, numbers, different symbols, Okay, letters, words, sentences. Um, another data type is uh, integer, which is whole numbers. There's floats, which are numbers with a decimal place, and then Boolean, which is true or false. And there are other data types as well, but those are the main ones. Okay, so we're gonna create um, variables in this tutorial and work with strings. Um, firstly, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this message here. So instead of saying, hello, this is my first C Sharp app, I'm going to change it to say, what is your name? So we're going to ask the user for their name. Okay, so if I just run that, let's see what happens. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. It's going to ask for the name. All right, now we want the user to be able to type in their name, hit return or enter, and then maybe it will display a message back to them. Okay, so we can um, just close that. All right, now what we can say um, we've got here actually, we've got console.readline, and what that does is it waits until the user enters something. But we can actually capture whatever the user enters. So um, if I just save that and run it again, it says, What is your name? I can go and type something in there. All right. So because I can type something in there, there's user input there, I can actually store that and use it. And the way I'll store it is by putting the input into a variable, okay? So to do that, I can create a new variable. I need to declare that variable, and I need to say what type of data is going to be in this variable. So if we allow the user to enter in their name, then the type of data it will be is a string because the name contains letters and different characters, like um, you know, the names might be hyphenated. Um, so a name is basically, it's going to be a string data type. So we can create a new variable and we can say that this variable is a string. All right, so it's string. And then the, um, so that's the data type and then we give the variable a name. So if it was going to be, um, if we were going to um, store a user's or a player's score in a game, then we might um, create a variable called score. All right, if we're gonna store the age, we'd create a variable called age. Um, but this variable is gonna store the user's name. So we'll just call it name. All right, so the name of this variable is name. 
all right? Or we could call it anything else, like username or something like that. Anyway, so we have a string variable called name. And then what we can say is equals, so we can assign this variable a value. Now, we could either just say string name equals, I don't know, John, okay? And we can put that inside quotes and we can make the name John, but we want to ask for the user's name. We want to store the user's name. So we can say string name equals console dot read line. And what that will do is when the user enters their name, it will store it in the variable called name. And we could then go and display it back to the user by saying console dot right line. And then in brackets, name. And then close the bracket and end that line with the semicolon. Now you'll notice that I don't actually need to put this inside quotes like I have done up here because we already know that the variable is a string. So we don't need to put it inside quotes. All right, the program already knows that it's a string. So we just put the actual variable name there. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll run that. So what is your name? I'm gonna put my name in. And then you'll see on the next line, it displays it back to me. Now, if I put name inside quotes, it would actually just say name. So it would ask for my name, I'd enter it in, and then it just says name, okay? Now, um, you also see that there's a little warning here. It says the variable name is assigned, but its value is never used. So we've created a variable here called name, and we haven't ended up using it because we've just created in a new string in here, or displayed a new string that is the actual word name. So we can get rid of that, those quotes, and that should fix it up. If we run it again, the error goes away and it will display my name. Okay, now what we might wanna do is actually, rather than just saying my name back to me, we might wanna display a little message there. So we can add a string to this right line statement and we can put a quote, quotation mark in there. We can say, hello there, comma, and then maybe a space, end the quote there, and then a plus. And what this will do is it will display the message, hello there, with a comma and a space, and then it will add the user's name to the end of that sentence. So it will join this and this together, which is known as concatenation. So it will concatenate these two strings or join them together. So I'll save that, I'll run it, what is your name? I'm going to enter my name. Hit return or enter and then it says hello there and then my name. Okay, so that's basically joining two strings together and using a variable in a statement in C sharp. We could go one step further and we could create another variable, another string variable, and we could say um, string message. So we could create a variable called message and it could contain a message which is just hello there, comma, space. All right, close that string and end that statement with a semicolon. And then it says, instead of saying hello there here, we could just refer to the variable name, which is message. And then we could add message and name together. So we can have hello there, and then the user's name as input together in one message. All right, so now we'll run that. And there we go, we get the same result, but where we have two separate variables there. So we could just go and change the message and we could use this message over and over again and only have to change it in one spot because now it's stored in a variable that can be used anywhere. All right, um, that's basically it. So um, that's basically what variables are and we'll look a little bit at strings and string concatenation. Um, so, from there, we're going to look at other data types like integers, and then we'll look at other ways of using variables and different methods in C-sharp. Okay, thanks for watching.